Ladies and gentlemen, señoras y señores, my name is Derek Santiago, my name is Beto Perez, bienvenidos and welcome to the Average People Video Show. Man, what's up, Beto? How you feeling, I'm man? I'm feeling good, dog. I feel like we needed to do an episode of us. Uh, we've been having guests the last couple of weeks, um, and I just feel like, you know, we, we wanted to catch up with each other and also kind of give uh, people a little bit more uh, info about who we are, what we're doing, and why we're doing this. Dog, first of all, I got to tell you, like... Fumbled the ball today, this morning. Why, why did you fumble the ball? Dog, I dropped. I I left like a key piece of this equipment. Man, I got a lot of hats. Got Sony's or what? I got I got a lot of hats. Nah, man, I missed this one connector when I was packing up all the gear today. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, man, sometimes I just get like, dog, you you can do it. You can remember. You, can do it. <laughs> you know what? It happens. Uh, uh, what I do is when I, I have my DJ travel bag, right? Okay. That DJ okay. travel bag, nothing comes out of that bag, only at gigs. Only at gigs. Only at gigs. So but even dog. if I need the cable, I won't leave it. I'll just go buy buy a cable. Even if I have it in that bag, just because when I get to that when I get to that gig, two things. Number one, the la the previous gig, I always like to pack my own stuff, so right. I know that everything is in there. Right. Number one. Number two, um, you know, make sure that all my stuff, um, you know, is is not being pulled out of there. So that way, when I get to my next gig, I'm not missing anything. Because nothing worse than getting to a gig and missing some stuff. Bro, so here we go. This is my third plug yeah. that I purchased. And I started this process already, yeah. like having everything itemized in my bags because I'm carrying like six or seven pieces of equipment yeah. with me. Yeah. So I started the process of itemizing everything and where everything has its place. Yeah. Didn't finish it. But now that's my to do list to get the to do list. So that way I never have this problem again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you tune into the show right now. There's literally three people that put this together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, there's no no big team or nothing, and we wanted to keep it small. You know, uh, I, I guess on purpose, right? Yeah, 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 for sure. So it, Derek takes care of all of the equipment, makes sure the equipment gets from I one place help. from one place to another. Uh, he also, um, you know, makes sure that the, the setup is there. Mateo, who is uh, behind the scenes, makes sure that everything's plugged up and and placed Mateo. correctly. And me, I just show up and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> always, all always, facts. always tardy. <laughs> always, always on tardy. <laughs> Always on tardy, man. <laughs> hey, so what's up, Mateo? Turn up, turn up your mic, man. Say what's up to the peeps. Hey, what's up? How's it going, everybody? Bro, hey, we got we got the the, the sports season coming up, so we're gonna be hearing a lot more of Mateo because he loves sports, bro. Mateo, what is your deal, dog? I'm a big sports fan. I like every type of sport except for hockey, but I'm learning. So, like, oh, what's your your least favorite sport? Uh, well, besides hockey, uh, probably soccer. Why ho hockey is <laughs> What's way... up with that? So hockey, hockey, hockey is dope. Is, there's dope. just not enough scoring, in my opinion. You don't need scoring. You need some ass whooping. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. the best part, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's the best part. Hey, and Matengo is off the camera right now, but shout out to Two Streams. He's got the Two Streams hat representing. Let's you know what go. I mean? Shout out to our sponsors, Two Streams, man. They've really been holding us down, Yeah, dog. man, much like, love honestly, to them. honestly, bro. And uh, they got a lot of big projects in the works. Not that they haven't had in the past, because they got <laughs> some crazy stuff. But now this going, they're making... They're going make Mega Jumbo. They're going Mega Jumbo and they mega got average jumbo. people. And they got average people in the building. Let's yeah, get let's it. Let's go. All right, man. Hey, you know what? Uh, we're uh, kind of uh, close. When, 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 when we least expect it, man, it's going to be summertime. And uh, summertime comes a lot of concerts. I am excited to attend a lot of big tours coming this year. Uh, I bought my tickets to Metallica. Bought my tickets Jeez. to Guns uh, Roses? Depeche, uh, Depeche Mode. Uh, bought my ticket to uh, Guns N' Roses. And then uh, tickets already to, uh, let me see, Janet Jackson with Ludacris, uh, Pantera. Well, bro, it's a lot of concerts, dog. Dog, hi. And they're all on different days, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, different dates. Some are in different cities. We're going to uh, we're uh, Metallica. We're going to uh, SoFi Stadium two nights. What? And uh, let me see, uh, what other one? Red Hot Chili Peppers. I think we're going to like Fresno or something. What? Yeah, no. I just want to say thank you for not inviting me. Dog. Oh, dude, you know what? Uh, we'll see you there, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dog. When we go to concerts, what are what are some of like? Uh, do you remember what's the most memorable concert you've ever been to? Um, some of the most memorable concerts. It are the ones that I performed at, like, honestly. Like well, give being, us a background on that. Uh, well, I was, you know, I was in hip-hop, uh, you know, in the in the late 90s, early 2000s, and yeah. I had the opportunity to be on stage with a lot of dope performers, also traveling the world and being in different cities, representing my own music. First of all, it's a trip to have your own music. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a trip. What's the recording process for you? Um, that's a good question. It depends. Like, it depends who I'm working with, yeah. and it also depends if... 
you know, if I already have something written or if I'm writing on the spot. Um, but I, I really like to, I don't have any rituals or anything like that, but I like to really catch a vibe with people, you yeah. know what I mean? Especially the ones that I'm working with. But some of the most memorable concerts, I would say, like, we're in Mexicali, dude, like, on stage with Pitbull. Not in Japan. Not not in Japan. Because you've been to Japan. I've been to Japan, but um, the thing about, and this is, this, is, this is a trip, dog. Like, honestly, like, being in Mexicali with Don Omar at the height of, like, his reggaeton, like, the when Dale? he was the king. Yeah, dude, when he was the, he's the king of reggaeton, like, straight yeah, up. Yeah, you think so? He's the so? king of reggaeton, like, yeah, dog. Like, he put it on the map. Him and, him and Yankee had beef, but, like, Don Omar, like... Did, do they have music together? No, nah, I'm not nah, sure. Nah, right, nah. they were beefing before they even like blew up. Well, I yeah. always think the king of reggaeton is is El General. Dude. Well, he's the originator. I feel like he's the but Godfather. they never they never gave him the credit because he's not Puerto Rican. He's Panameño. He's Panameño. But dude, like that is what kicked it off. Like that that whole vibe of like the, the boom boom, boom, boom mommy, 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 and like, like, all that dog. Like that's what kicked it off. You yeah, know what I mean. But if you want to talk about most memorable concert, I would say Don Omar in Mexicali, and then probably the second one is. Being on stage with Don Omar in Tijuana. Tijuana, yeah, dude. yeah, dog. Like, what a it trip! Was, it was a trip, and, um, and you've been you've been around the world, but those are still the most memorable ones. Well, technically, it's international, but we just live right next door, so it's not that big of a deal, right? But if you were from like Puerto Rico coming to Mexicali, then it's like, oh damn, okay, yeah. It, and it was again, it was like such just a memorable experience to be on stage with dude to see what he was doing, and also to share the stage and represent. Of course, we wrecked it. Shout out to ES. Shout out to Big Slick. Shout out to all the homies. Like. Man, it was just an amazing experience and one of the things that I archive. So when you say about what my one of my most memorable concerts, that's it. Definitely one of those. Bro, ones. when you go to Mexicali, you got family in Mexicali. I got family in Mexicali. Do yeah. you do you ever come through the Mexico side or it's only the US side? What do you mean? Like when you travel back. Or when you go there, either or. It depends. So well, when I, I, I guess what I'm getting at is if you pass the Rumorosa. The okay, so shout out to the Rumorosa, the craziest like street. In the world. The craziest mountain <laughs> in the world. Dog. Bro, that's the highest mountain I've ever, like, driven on. Dog, I, I'll tell you I'll tell you one thing about that road. Like, it reminds me of the Big Bear Road. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Have you For ever been to Big Bear? For folks that are from, like, you know, in Brazil that don't know what we're talking about or folks that are listening in the Philippines, like, how can we best describe this? It's the Mount Everest with cars. Bro, and it's super <laughs> crazy because there's semis driving. There's really no regulations. There's rules. Like, people are driving it right now, risking their lives and right I, now. now as keep, we speak. I haven't been to Mexico in 18 years, bro. Obviously I can't leave the country, but um, the last time you rode the Rumorosa, now did they already have the new, the new uh, highway coming back? Cause I guess apparently the Rumorosa, it's not the one way, like two lanes anymore. Now it's like a whole another another route. I prefer not to drive on the Rumorosa. The so OG. the only time that I do is when we go out to my compadres, my, my compadres got like a little pad out there. Yeah. So we'll, we'll kind of creep through Tecate, but we won't, we won't drive all the way to Bro, Mexico. Bro, you remember just driving? I remember the, the first time that I ever wanted to be on radio was I was on the Rumorosa and I remember I had my head we're on camera so you could actually yeah. hear. i had my head like this bro i was a little kid i had my head like this outside and i heard yeah. this radio guy come on and he was like Buenas tardes, esta noche no se les olvide que tenemos la gran presentación de bronco or whatever the hell it was right? yeah yeah, yeah. And i was like damn dog, i want to be on the radio and i was looking out the window seeing all the cars on the bottom of the of the mountain just like dude probably the families are still in there or whoever was in that that's dog, a trip it's it's crazy there's a lot of people even my wife like even my wife has a story when she was a kid and like you know they pack the kid. They pack the kids in the car in Mexicali. Like, yeah. Um, you know, my my wifey's family. Well, my family. Um, they're a big family. Yeah. So they'd be like, "Yo, we have a truck. We'd have the kids in the back. Um, my my like on um, the bed or like in the back of the like back, in the back, back seat, but where there wasn't really a seat. Then in the front and the floorboard, a kid would sit. You know what I mean? There'd be a kid in the middle. Like they would pack like six, seven people in a truck. Oh, my mom, cab, my dog. mom would pack nine people, dog. We used to have, she used to have a 1969 Dodge Plymouth and uh, it was the bench, the bench seats. So it would be, yeah. you know, four, five, six in the front sometimes and four, five, six in the back. Man, sometimes 10, 11, now that I think about it. Bro, there was like no regulations. Even no. in the back of like the trucks, like in the beds. Yeah. Like, dog, I remember being in my cousin, Bob, what's up, Primo Boss? He had Primo a, Boss? Yeah, my, my Primo, <laughs> my Primo Boss, Boss Renteria. Um, he was named after Boss Skaggs, like an OG. Oh, I thought his name was like B-O-S-S-S. -S -S. I'm like, no, oh, B -O -Z. Primo Boss. Oh, B -O -Z. that's kind of Yeah, dope. yeah, B-O-Z, yeah. Um, and that's what we used to call him, B-O-Z. Hey, but um, he had a, a, a Nissan hard body yeah. slammed on McLean's. And we would ride down the five freeway like at 95 miles per hour. We're like 10 deep in the back of the truck, dog. 
like oh. in in the mid nineties, dog. And like that would never happen Th- now. Think about uh, think about even drinking and driving back then. You weren't you you get pulled over wasn't what it is today. You know what I mean? It was like yeah. oh, you probably go to the drunk tank and you get a ticket and that's it. Ticket, You're, yeah. bro. The regulations, all that stuff changed. Now you get you get hit. Your your life changes, and it's a bag if you get a DUI. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you got, <laughs> and back then they didn't even have car seats like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what what that's that's anyways, bro. We're going back in time, dude. I know, I, taking I know, me back, I think about a lot of things. Being when average, we're a kid. being remember, average right now, G. <laughs> well, we're always average, man. Never above, never below, just eye to eye. But do you uh, think, um, bro? You you think all those stuffs are lessons that were taught to us, or did we just was just like another day in life? It depends, dude. It it really depends on on the circumstances. Because there was times where we took penitentiary chances. There was times where we took we risked our lives yeah. just to have fun, you know. And I think that it's based on you know, really circumstances. And I think that our lives were, were just so different. We looked at it more free. We were, there wasn't like social media. So we weren't getting, we weren't getting like ideas about doing stuff or doing shit. You know what I mean? And it was just like, we were out here. The other day I rode the trolley and I was like, man, when I was a kid, I used to ride this trolley every day, multiple times, not even trip. And I'm like, damn, bro, there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, for, for the time, for the age being that we were at that time, I was like, there was a lot of dangerous stuff going on that we didn't even realize, you know? Yeah, and not to mention that, but, like, when the trolley, like, I was around when the trolley first, like, I was a kid. I was a, like, I remember I was in elementary school, and the first trolley ride, it was a penny for everybody to ride the trolley, and no one was like, we're not riding that. You know what I mean? Wait, you were around when the first, the trolley first opened or yeah, started? Dude, yeah, yeah. I thought well, the trolley's been around since, like, the 80s, 70s. Early 80s. Early oh, 80s, damn. yeah, yeah, and I was a kid. I was, like, like small, like, very, very small, but, like, um, the crazy thing about it, though, is when it connected... Um, people started moving around the city a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? And, and like, especially like, well, man, when we became teenagers, that's how we were like, you know, riding on walls and doing regular stuff. And that's how we got around G like, you know what I mean? The orange line and the blue line were, where it was at. Damn, dude, that's, that's, bro, it's changed and it's evolved a whole lot. Um, man, just, you, you made me think about a whole lot of stuff. Anyway, so we were, we were talking about concerts, the stuff that we were attending. Um, most dude, memorable. how do we con- get there? Well, how we were we talking about there? most memorable. Con- <laughs> this, this is a conversation between, uh, compadre and I, this is how we talk. Hey, oh, if, if, if people always want to get in our heads, like, how do you guys come up with this? Or how do you do that? Like, it just happens. You know what I mean? Uh, but we were talking about concerts and concert series. Well, I was I, the reason I brought it up was because obviously summer's coming up and two things yesterday. I, I seen uh, some lady uh, who went viral because she got a, a big birote, like a big piece of bread what? and put a, a, a bottle of wine inside of it. Really? Yeah. dog. And I was Why like, she do I was thinking for? like, I go to a lot of concerts and, and I got to sometimes sneak stuff in. Like, what do I got to do? Like, I just put it down my pants. You know what I mean? Dude, that's, <laughs> that's so weird. Cause they have like wines and pouches and stuff like that, where you don't yeah. have to do all that. No, but the lady put a whole bottle, like a big birote. And she stuffed the whole bottle inside. <laughs> it's not that important. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, depends if you got money for or not. You know what I mean? You yeah. want to have a good time. And yeah. they, hey, those drinks in there, I don't really drink, but those drinks in there get expensive. Like 18 bucks for a beer. Yeah, I got to say, like, now that I'm straight edge. Oh, well, I haven't. I dog, haven't drink talk alcohol. about this straight edge. Oh, man, dog. Like, well, well it's we, ju- we just jumped from. from, from I know. From I know. Well, I will. I will. Let me finish okay. my let okay. me finish my thought, though, because we, we will get on it. But, All right. Get that like, thought out. Um, get that thought out. <laughs> but now that I'm straight edge, I save a lot of paper. I save a lot of, I never recognize how much money I spent on alcohol. It gets, man, it's, I, I'm saving a lot of money. I'm saving a lot of money. But the thing was for me, it was a decision that I made just because man, for so long I've had, um, alcohol in my life Yeah. and, um, yeah, utilize it as a coping mechanism. Not that it's bad for people or whatever, but for me, I just made a decision that there's been just so long that I've utilized alcohol yeah. that I decided to remove it because I think it's a good idea because I haven't had, I haven't done it, especially since the pandemic started, you know what I mean? And I think that, uh, social casual drinking kind of scaled up a little bit after the pando. Bro, it's, you know it's, it's, it's kind of weird to be like, uh, well, you know, I don't really drink right back again to that. Uh, so it's, it's weird to like go to like social settings and, uh, not, drink dude the other day i walked into a bar and i was like i like the vibe here but i'm just standing here solo bolo and looking like you know what i mean like damn like i don't know i just look i don't want to look like a creep bro and you want to order water like it's kind of weird one thing for me too that i trip out on like especially if i go into social settings like that yeah. for example um i'll see the crowd start like scaling down you know what i mean like as soon as they start like getting faded like the mood in the whole room changes. And I never recognized that before because I was part of the change. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a trip. It's, a, it's definitely that, I mean, a trip. Are people coupling up and taking off? Is that what's going on? Or, or um, just the energy? 
<laughs> it's a little bit of both. It might, be, it might be a little bit of both. Hey, I got to put you on the spot, bro. Speaking of drinking, you do another kind of drinking. You do Starbucks, bro. I coffee, I can't do it. Dog. So it, it gets me pumped up. I want to. I'm. I, I'm working out like I'm doing 25 to life when I drink coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I've had you. 20, maybe 25 cups of of coffee my whole entire life. Uh, yesterday, I went to go get a drink for uh, my coworker Phil. Man, congratulations to Phil blowing it up. So Phil got a. He he's like, all right, man. You want to give me something? I was like, yeah. He's all Starbucks. He's all a vent. I, let me remember this. Venti, eight shots espresso, seven shots pumpkin spice, and uh, one, uh, what was the other one? It was one, so, oh, a splash of something. Bro, what oat the milk? hell? A splash of oat milk oh, or what? No, no, and, and, and then it was, and then it was uh, something about, something about uh, uh, foam, cold foam. Cold, yeah, man, hey, cold foam is a business. Dog, what, what? Cold foam is a business. What's up with these, are these, are these drinks on the menu or they make these up? Some of them are on the menu. Some of them get made up. You yeah. have the you have the luxury of creating your own drink if you choose. Some of them are pre made. Some of them are like variations of a drink that's already pre made. So it's like it, it switches, bro. Like honestly, wow. And then the guy was like being super nice. He's like, "Do you want to dragon fruit mango?" And I was like, "Does it have coffee in it or caffeine?" He's like, "No." And I was like, "Perfect, give it to me." It was good, bro. Yeah. The and, then it had, and, and then it had like little sugar cubes almost inside. Yeah, I was like, "What the hell is this, dog?" Those are those are pretty fire. But one thing I can say about my Starbucks is that yeah. I put it away. Like today's my first Starbucks in a while. Yeah, and um, because it doesn't again, give you the, it doesn't spit, give you the poopies right away. It gives me the shit. I've been drinking coffee my whole life. <laughs> For real? Yeah, <laughs> dog, nah, not yeah, me. yeah. We we need coffee in our lives. We're Puerto Rican, man. Latino. <laughs> you're one of the only people that don't really drink coffee, and you don't watch movies. You're and like one of you're, you're like in the either. you're in the minority, bro. Yeah. Hey, wait. Actually, the last time I drank alcohol was on your birthday, my guy. That was November. November. We're already in what? Almost April. Yeah, almost wow. April, dog. So it's been. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I sometimes I'd be wanting to get you know a little sip. What's you know one what of mean? the What's one of the biggest changes you you've noticed? Um, having to deal with my problem sober, <laughs> which is which is almost better because you you put you, when you I feel like when you deal with stuff sober, bro, you almost uh you almost like deal with it on the spot. Well, and, yeah, and, and you feel the pain more, which kind of gets it out the system. Yeah, I'm keeping it real right now. No, right? yeah, I'm, it's I'm cool. mean, being Me too. real, real, really average right yeah, now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's nothing wrong. Um, with that. But one thing I can say, yeah, is that again, I said it earlier, it's kind of a coping mechanism, yeah, you know, and it's socially accepted to drink alcohol, it's, it's marketed everywhere. And I think that it's easy to kind of utilize it as a coping mechanism instead of facing, you know, situations or scenarios that you probably might sweep under the rug with a drink. You know what I mean? Here, yeah. I'm really doing work and working on who I am to be a better father, to be a better husband, to be a better son, to be a better friend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, if I want to do that work, then I have to confront the dark spaces or the spaces that I normally would just be like, eh. You know what I'm saying? So just just keeping it a book, man. It's just it's hey, part of my faith. Confronting too, those dark spaces is is the business though with life, and we don't realize it until we start getting older, and then we go back and like, damn, that when I was a kid, that really affected me. Like, damn, you don't even realize, it, man. You, know? you don't want to get on this one because it's true. Like, you know, the, child childhood traumas. It's a real thing. Really impact adults today. I, I, there's two things that I call. There's another one that I call it hood trauma. Which is hood growing trauma. up in the hood. I, I got sure. I got hood trauma. Yeah. I'm always constantly like looking out like, oh, nah, that dude looks sketchy, bro. Let's let's shake the spot or let's yeah. move. And then people be like, bro, he's just chilling. I'm like, nah, that dude's up to something. You know, Doug, it's like it's like the spidey sense in the hood. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the only reason why you know that is because you're familiar with that environment. Yeah. So you can see flags and you can see tells. It's like it's like playing cards, right? Yeah. You, if someone's bluffing, you can kind of see what they're doing. And on the block, you kind of recognize what's out of place. You yeah. kind of recognize when people don't have the good energy. You know what I mean? It's also something that we've grown to and, and just being authentic and being original people and true to ourselves. Yeah. You kind of have that natural ability to be able to understand like that gut feeling. That but gut not feeling. everybody listens to the gut feeling. Oh, you got to listen. That's that's the one thing I learned in the last five years is that you have to listen to that gut feeling. That gut feeling. My mom says, oh, son, los angelitos. It's the angels. Whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. It's the right. gut It's the gut feeling. Um, and and some, some folks in, interpret that gut feeling as uh, like, oh, I'm getting anxious. I'm like, no, that's your gut feeling, you know? Or you yeah. have butterflies. Yeah, for, for sure. And you know what? The, the thing about the butterflies and the gut feeling is like, yeah, it can be a spiritual piece. You yeah. know what I mean? It can be, the you know, the Holy Spirit on you. I, I'm a believer, so I believe in, you believer. know, things. Yeah, for sure. I, be, I believe in my, you know, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But one thing I can say is that it's, it's the same feeling, but it depends on how you interpret it, right? Yeah. And sometimes you've been in a spot. I've been with you, G, where we'd be like, yo, we need to shake the spot. We've, we've bounced and dipped and then something occurred. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? We've been like, multiple. 
<laughs> dog, like crazy spots. And then it's like, you know, and that's from the top, man. Yeah. We've, we've been on the outside. There's been times where we've had, you know, um, glimpses of what could have been, yep, you know what I mean? Yep. And just by the grace of God and by, you know, luck or whatever people want to call it. Yeah. Right. Um, been able to maneuver and, and dodge circumstances. Yeah. So it's, it's all going back to childhood and hood traumas. Hood you know trauma. I mean? and, and also it's really weird, but I feel the most soothing in the hood. Like, like I'll be in La Jolla. I'll be like, Oh nah, bro. I mean, you know, this is not my spot. Like I feel uncomfortable. Somebody looks at me weird. I'm like, nah, bro, I got to get out of here. Yeah. But then you be in the hood. Somebody looks at you be like, Oh, what's up? You know, like it's weird. Dog, the last time I had somebody try to challenge me on a fight was in a bike ride in Encinitas, dog. You remember Encinitas. that? Encinitas. <laughs> and he was in the wrong. I was kind of in the wrong too, dog. Like, I get it. I get why he got mad, but he didn't but have he to didn't bark have to at do me. that. And, and it was summertime and he was wearing a three-piece suit. <laughs> Bro, on the beach, but we were on bikes, right? And I cut off a car that was turning right. I cut off a car that was turning right. Dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he was like, he was trying to act like he was the mayor of Encinitas. And he was like trying to call me out and check me. And like part of me, part of the old person in me turned the bike around. And then we I was stopped. like, we stopped. And then I'm like, yo, people started getting their phones out and right all this stuff. Yeah, dog. And I was like, you know what? Like, nah, I'm bigger than this. I'm bigger. Yeah. I did say, I did call him like a Hallmark or you something. Call, you like call, a Hallmark you, card that's or something. That's why I laughed so hard right now. This fool <laughs> said, hey, Mateo, you know what he did, bro? So, so you know, the incident happened. This dude, we stopped. We go back and we're like, ah, oh, dude, like, Man, nah, this me. fool's like, he nunchuck chores, dude. Nunchuck chores. <laughs> <laughs> nunchuck chori. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was getting at. Hey, and uh, what happened was... Um, uh, we ended up taking off, dude, and, and right when he, this dude to his face, he called him a Hallmark. Uh, what you? Uh, I think a Hallmark card or something. No, no, you or, called him Hallmark. Look at uh, you, fake ass Hallmark yeah. poster. Uh, you did something. It was bad, and it was the funniest shit. I, bro, I couldn't stop laughing. I was like, did you just call him a Hallmark? Uh, <laughs> bro, it was in the daytime. It was sunny. It was summer, and dude was dressed in like a three, a three piece, piece suit, suit bro. In, on the beach. on the, the beach. beach. Like what? Like it was just like I don't know if you're going to a job interview, or whatever. It was a nah, weekend. He wasn't going to a job weekend, interview, right? It was yeah. a weekend, so it's like, man, I don't know, dog. Hallmark replica is that what you called them? I don't remember, man. But Hallmark poster child. If I child. ever see that guy, man, I apologize to him, man. I was in the wrong. I get it, but he wasn't even involved. He was just like a bystander. He was. He had nothing to do with anything. He just wanted to flex in front of the people that were eating. You know what I mean? Like, bro, stop it. He probably had his girlfriend right there, huh? My spoof. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bethel, man. I, Dude, so I just want to thank you, dog. Why? Well, thank Good, you, man. Because you know what, we've been we've been at this for a minute, man. Yeah. We're gonna keep on going, G. And yeah. it's like you know a lot of things have have changed, and we're growing, and we're gonna continue to push. You know what I mean? Yeah. But thank you for your patience as we've learned. Thank you, Mateo, for holding it down. Um, and thank you to two streams, dog. Thank you to like two straight streams. up, so we're wrapping it up. That's what we're doing. All right. Yeah, we're yeah. We gotta it wrap it up, no, dog. Man. Like you know what I mean? Come we on. really got into the conversation on how Mark look like. People dude. are telling me they're like, "Yo, we love this stuff," but it's like, "Yo, Too we long? extend those. We extend those. We oh. extend them out." Okay. All right. Anyways, man. Hey, my name is Beto Perez. Follow me on my Instagram at Cali Burrito. My name is Derek Santiago. You can catch me at Derek Goes on IG, man. Yeah. Thank you for pulling up. We appreciate you guys, man. Compadre, any last words? Yeah, man? come we on. Gotta, man. We got to send some love out to uh, Mateo, not a doormat. Make sure you follow him, not a doormat. 619. 619. Thank you to our uh, partners, Two Streams, and we will see you uh, April the 9th. April the 9th. Yeah. Let them know. Let them know. It's going to be at Las Tres Catrinas. Uh, we have. The food's good there, dog. Yeah. The, we... food, is, the food is really good at Las Tres Catrinas. Yeah, my, my favorite is those rolled tacos. Dude, the, the little. Um, the little roll Tacos? Tacos? The yeah. appetizers? Bro, by far. Bro, my I, I know we ordered two last time we went. Um, April the 9th, we got a cool event. It's to support uh, Camp uh, uh, Okaizu, Okaizu yeah. who is out of Northern California, who, uh, you know, takes care of kids with cancer. And uh, their, their campground just recently burnt down during the big fires. And then uh, also it's going to Hold benefit. on. Wait, before, before you jump into yeah. that, let me just talk a little bit about Camp Okaizu real quick. Because... What people don't understand, it's like for families that are dealing with children yeah. and their families that have cancer. And what this does is it gives those kids who are going through cancer treatment a little slice of regular life. So it's a campground and every dollar counts because they don't charge the family. They bring the siblings, all these people to go and do all the cool stuff that kids that suffer from cancer and that are going through treatment, they don't normally get to do. They get yep. to actually be like a regular kid during these times. Unfortunately, during the wildfires, the camp burned down, so they're raising funds to rebuild the camp to give that experience back to these kids. And that's the reason why Bethel got involved, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so we're doing for that. And we were already in the process of doing that event. And then what happened after that, G? Like, honestly, like, keep it real. Keep it real. What happened? 
we found out about the Twin Hills Little League. In the middle of the process. In the yes, middle yes, of the yes, process. Yes, yes. And we were like, yo, like. We got to help them out. We grew up on Little Leagues. You know what I mean? Yeah. We grew up on the Boys and Girls Club. We grew up on the YMCAs. We grew up, you know, uh, dude. When, so, so also, it got to a point where we couldn't afford Little Leagues and we were playing in the middle of the street. Yeah, car, yeah. car. Car. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and then be mad at the cars because they're driving down the street. Yeah, down the street. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, we got, we plugged up at Twin Hills thanks to our good friend uh, Laz. And by then, uh, uh, Emo Brown was already doing something. Dude, for Emo them. Brown, yeah, Emo Brown like uh, did a dope ride for them, yep. and they made shirts, and, and there's a lot uh, of stuff. Yeah, so then we got involved with them. We're like, dude, let's. We talked to a good friend Marty, who was part of Camp Kaizu, and they mm-hmm. were like, yeah, let's split the cost. And he was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you know. Um, so we're gonna do it April the 9th. Las Tres Catrinas, come out and join us. We got raffles in between innings. Uh, we have some uh, really cool, uh, cool, cool stuff memorabilia that we're gonna be yeah. uh, giving away. We're gonna uh, um, Padres tickets, concert. Or t- man, there's a lot it's of stuff April the going 9th, down. Man. If you if you're not there, it's cool. We'll see you at the next one, but you're gonna hear about it. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna hear about it. And the cool thing about this this thing too is that on Easter Sunday, I mean, people go to church, but usually after church, what do people do? People go eat, right? And the cool thing about it is that that Sunday is Padres versus the Atlanta Braves. Yep. Sunday night baseball on ESPN. The team's gonna be out there balling. We're gonna be raising funds for the little league in Campo Kaizu. Yep. Uh, Las Tres Catrinas has been generous. They're going to donate a portion of the proceeds and the sales to the fundraiser, right? Yep. And last but not least, it's just going to be the first one of many, many. coming. You know yep. what I'm saying? So thank so you we'll so see much, you out man. There. Yeah, we're going to see you out there, man. All Pull right. up, man. What time? Four uh, it's going to be uh, 4 o'clock. 4 yep. o'clock four is o'clock. When the first page. Yep, it's when it's starting. So we'll see you out there. Have a good time. Uh, details, follow me at Cali Burrito. Hit me up if you got info or if you need info, we'll yeah, take care of that. We got you. Me. We got you. And it's not, it's, it's on April 9th. April Easter 9th. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. We appreciate you guys, man. Yep. My name is Derek Santiago. Nice to see you. Compadre. Beto Perez. Hello. Peace.